face. I'm a cracker. Good. Yeah, I got my whole yeah I'm usually a 10 if it's a part two. <laughs> yeah. I know. The spot where I used to do it, I can go, I can put it in a garden. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. morning. I wanted to see what the rest of the world looks like, so I switched sides. Oh, no, actually, uh, just knows it. I got thinking about uh, last week. We almost missed Matt Delaney Arnett. when he came in and turned around and walked back out. Oh. And uh, but Kim spotted him, you know, because I'm facing this way. I don't see when people come in and all that. And I got thinking, I really should be looking this way, not that way. But there's a new problem. Oh. Can't see the clock. So we'll have to go overtime. <laughs> we'll let you know. Yeah, we'll let you know. Can you guys start leaving? Yeah. Start being our They put the lights out. Oh, they look like the lights out. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we'll start with our our usual praise and Thanksgiving. So who's got a praise for this week? Praise God he's here. Amen. I guess. Yes. I guess. <laughs> I guess. I don't know the insurance was seventy five thousand dollars if he was killed, you know. <laughs> I wasn't I was thinking. That's why we pray lead us not into temptation. Yeah. <laughs> when he's out plowing the field in the middle of a thunderstorm. <laughs> well, if you're going to do that, lease up your life insurance. <laughs> That's right. That was worth more for what it's worth it. Praise God, it's cool today. Yes. Yeah. My hottest day was about 110, so this wow. is about half. Wow. About half is warm. Is up, is you were in the summertime. We were warm. Yeah. Out in the village, we were very warm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wow. And if you hear anything from him, don't worry about flu or anything. It's his allergies because yeah. he's come back to pollen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know the feeling. Right yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there is no pollen in, in Africa at this time. They're, they're on their downside. The trees are quite bare and, and uh, nothing is blooming yet. They get into their rainy season sometime shortly coming up, mm -hmm. and then they have two months where they might get rain. And that's the only rain they get all year, wow. is they yeah. might get rain for two, in, during the two months. That's their growing season for the crops, and everything that sustains them for 12 months of the year will be the next two months. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the way their life cycle runs. We're here. Yeah, we're blessed. We are, we are blessed. We are blessed. Yeah. Is marijuana legal over there? <laughs> no, you, you would go to jail and could be executed if you bring drugs into the country. Uh, they are very serious. But as they Muslims, can't. They can't grow it there either. As Muslims, as Muslims, they are very serious about things that destroy the body. Oh. And any of that stuff, any of that stuff, will put you in jail for a very long time. No question there. They don't have the same kind of rights as we do, and all that stuff. You'll just disappear from the world. Warm, very strong. I think I'll stay with him there. Well, <laughs> <laughs> be careful. <laughs> because we, uh, as Christians, we got to be willing to go and say and do whatever the Lord tells us. And if we're afraid of something, sometimes God sends us. I remember for, for, uh, growing up, I had no desire at, at all to go to Africa. That would be like the last place I would want to go to. And that's where the Lord took me. <laughs> Didn't you go one time something about uh, irrigation? Yes. Here? Every, yeah. every time yeah. it's been on irrigation. Okay. Uh, and, you know, as the main focus. But just like uh, mm -hmm. uh, teaching, I never wanted to do that. And the Lord has different ideas. Uh, preaching. Never never want to preach. Uh, when the Lord gives us the opportunity, if you're willing to obey him and we say we are, you've got to do it. You don't have a choice. I never thought I'd go to church either. Look what happened. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I want to praise God for um, we 
we were talking in Bible study last week as far as the beauty in nature. And I've seen at least three baby fawns, just like oh. baby babies. And uh, I came home yesterday, and, uh, and Bill was waiting for me because we were switching vehicles, and I heard this noise, and he was like, it's just a bird. And, like, oh, and then I really heard the noise, and we walked around. I, my yard's kind of corralled. You would think I have livestock, but it's for the dogs, and there's one area that's completely fenced with the doggy door. There's another area that's out the back deck that goes down to the grass, but it's it's fenced right into the water because of the dogs. They can storm and swim away. Or, mm -hmm. So and then the gate block. So they only can go out there when I let them. Well, somehow a little tiny baby was stuck in this area. The water's here, and it was in this corner crying and, and going back. Away. This big, it was tiny. And so we're like, what do we do? You know. So there's an area where he can unhook the fence, um, and so he. Unhooked it and it's it's terrified. It's over the corner trying to beat its way through the chicken wire. I'm like, stop scaring it. And so he backed up and I came around and we kind of cornered it and he grabbed it while it screamed mm -hmm. and set it free and it took off running. And I was like, say oh, prayers for the little guy. <laughs> I don't know because I watched, of course, in the evening I saw a mother and a baby up because the, the back area of our, our yard is all very wooded and, and we're always up there. And so I watched him. I got my binoculars. My windows are so dirty. <laughs> Is that? And I couldn't tell. This mother was cleaning this baby. It almost looked like it was new because it was kind of stepping around a little bit. But I couldn't tell if it was the same one. Could have been. I don't know if this mother takes it back. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But I just. Uh, I wonder how it got in there. That's what we couldn't figure out. Um, I've seen them swim before, but yesterday was so windy and so wavy. You wouldn't think that the mother would have, but the fence only goes down a little ways. So oh, so it's it open at the end of the river? It was going into the water. So and they we have like technically they could swim from across yep. the river? Yep. And or they could have swam around from the other property. What keeps the dogs from going across the river? It doesn't always, but they're not good swimmers. They're just little French bulldog type things. So, so Stormy the first year was, was the one that would jump right off the dock and go after a kayaker or anything. But now she's kind of learned that that's not, yeah. So you have to watch her because if you're not, she will yeah. try swimming around. And she's done it a couple times when it's really early season yeah. and I've got to go in after her. Uh. Yeah. But just seeing, seeing the, the baby fawns and everything. Honey, I was just thinking that yesterday. I haven't seen any fawns yet. Yeah. But you've seen house. three of them. Yeah. yeah, we've seen a couple on the roadsides. Yeah, live, I hope. Yeah, well, yeah, for the most part. One almost didn't make it. Mom, I had to tell her, you know, hey, there's something in the road up there, Mom. She, she finally woke up. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So she's the next one loser. Bloody some sort of sleep out there. Get out of Newport Griffin's glasses. God allows those things to happen. 
happens sometimes to get us thinking about, hey, we're not going to be here forever. And I told her, you were praying for her a lot, because yeah. in many churches where she, um, she was on the church, I was like, where are we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it took me a lot of years to figure out that funerals are for the, for the living, not the dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It took me a long time to figure that out. Good morning, Donna. Just in time to give praise or prayer requests. <laughs> Have anything you need to pray about this month? On this month? Anybody mm-hmm. else? I'm um, going uh, to pray for uh, we figure out that, that Kim was down with an electrical problem yesterday. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully that bill can get away and maybe help figure out. I mm-hmm. don't know if it's battery or electrical and camper, but we're hoping we can figure it out without too much issue. He was pretty cold, he said, this morning. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> why you're cold. I, don't know, all the electric I thought it was camper. just the outside temperature. No, it's cold inside. Leaving. And <laughs> 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 um, pray for safety, that there's nothing going on that would you know, bring yeah. harm to him, especially in a small prayer. So. I'd like to pray for uh, my friend, Dean. Uh, I was talking to him the other night, and uh, of course he sold the place. Uh, he's starting to feel better. Already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's, you know, he's, I think mentally he's feeling better because he's getting rid of like because of the headaches, um, especially from the state, you know, bothering him all the time. And, and uh, so I think he just mentally he's feeling better. Yeah. And of course, that has a lot to do with physically feeling better, I think. Um, so I like, you know, like to pray for him to continue. Right. Let's go to prayer, and then we're going to get back into our study. We've got a good topic to keep going on today. Uh, how about Sister Brenda? Would you try to remember some of these? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me if I forget. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning with great gratitude and thanksgiving. We ask um, that you hear our prayers today. Um, we want to pray for Tanya and um, for her health condition, Lord, and um, we just ask that you would be with her and she feel your presence this morning. Lord, I pray for um, LJ and, and Vicki as they travel this week to be with her, um, give them safe travels, and um, bring them back safe as well. Um, we want to pray for Calvin's friend Jean. Continue to guide him in his health, Lord, and be better. And Lord, maybe one day we'll see him walk through the door. So we pray that. Lord, um, Lord we also lift up John with the electrical problems in his camper, Lord. Um, I pray that they'd be able to find it quickly and be able to resolve the issue. There would be no harm done. Um, and Lord, we just want to thank you for this time together. If I've missed some, you know you've heard them. So we thank you for listening to us and coming before us today. Open our eyes and ears to what you would have to say to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All righty. We are on 173, second paragraph, we talk, we're talking a little bit about personalities and how God uses them, and we're going to talk about character. Uh, how about John, would you start us? God wants you to develop the kind of character described in the Beatitudes. Through the Spirit, Paul's great chapter on, on love, and Peter's list of characteristics for an effective and productive life. Every time you forget the character, character is one of God's purposes for your life. You will become frustrated by your circumstances. You'll wonder, why is this happening to me? Why am I having such a difficult time? One answer is that life is supposed to be difficult. It's what enables us to grow. Remember, earth is not heaven. Uh, what is a, a, a definition of, or what does the book mean when we talk about character? It means something that says, like a certain type of character, or you have character. 
What is your character? Disposition. Okay, disposition. Collection of personality traits. Okay. Uh, how do you just how do you figure out what a person's character is like, or how would you answer your own question? What kind of character do I have? What is my character? My my personality traits. Yeah, that's certainly part of it. Uh, your disposition. That that's easily seen, really. Your disposition. What does that mean, disposition? Behavior. Yeah. And something a little more. What goes with behavior? Attitude. You what? Attitude. Attitude. I think that would probably fit in there. Uh, I'm thinking of your actions are is your behavior, your your disposition, but it's also your reaction. And the reactions are probably more indicative of character than your actions. Because your actions can be more easily controlled. Right? Your reaction is really kind of how reveals who you are on the inside. Uh, I wish Calvin hadn't have left. He just showed me, or told me something that happened to him this week. He said, I was getting in the van and I bumped my head. I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Before he'd been talking about swearing. And then he said, then I bumped my head again. <laughs> <laughs> but see, his character's changing. He, he, God is developing his character. Um, so it starts out I think with our disposition, our, our personalities, but our character has the ability to change. It can develop. Uh, remember in that other book we did, the uh, Battlefield of the Mind? He said it, things start with a thought, you first get a thought, then, then it becomes a word, something we begin to speak, then it becomes a habit, and then the habit becomes our character, and our character becomes our destiny. It all builds. So we can affect our character based on what we think, and what we say, and what we, how we act, and then how we react. So that's what we started to talk about, how God can change our character. We're, character is something that gets developed over time. Any other thoughts about that before we go on? Okay, Rebecca? Many Christians? Many Christians mis misinterpret Jesus' promise of the abundant life to mean perfect health, a comfortable lifestyle, constant happiness, full realization of your dreams, and instant relief from the problems through faith and prayer. In a word, they expect the Christian life to be easy. They expect heaven on earth. What's that uh, Jesus promise of abundant life? What's that mean? Yeah, where are they getting at? Yeah, it doesn't mean that you're going to get everything you want. <laughs> you know, but where's that coming from? Abundant life. What do you mean Jesus? Promise abundant life. Where did you get that idea? Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life abundantly. So, right. I mean, so we can have it through Him. So that's where it started from. Jesus yeah. said it. He came for us to have abundant life. Mm -hmm. Now, what you said. Doesn't mean no material, you know, everything that we desire. Um, although it, in the Bible it'll say, ask, you know, and these things will be given to you. It doesn't mean, and that's sometimes where people nitpick, you know, in between. But it's asking God will give you what you need. Okay. What He feels you need. You know, we may think, oh, I gotta have that brand new car, and come on, I'm praying and praying about it. It's gotta be this car because I love the color. 
Is she back there? I thought you were skipping. Here I've been thinking these negative thoughts, and, and you're hiding behind me. <laughs> yeah, we can't have that, can we? We gotta move him over. <laughs> desires, so I think those aren't mutually exclusive. I think you can have them both. Where we fall is where we think it's all about me. I'm going to get everything I want. And I if you don't. For it and I deserve it. And I, yeah. you know. I, I just don't like us to, I don't want people to get the idea that being a Christian is nothing but drudgery, hard work, giving up everything never having what you want, but you'll get it eventually. The pie in the sky thing they used to say. Well, there is pie in the sky, I believe. And I believe there's also pie here. The whole pie. The whole pie is up there, but, but we can have a piece of the pie here. I heard a preacher share a story of this man who is, he was Christian. He was very very wealthy. He had one son. And when he died, of course, he accumulated a lot, so they had an auction. And I mean, people from all over the world were going to bid on something. I mean, he was very, very rich. And um, so they're at the auction, and uh, the first thing up for bid was a picture of his son. And the auctioneer starts saying, who, who wants to purchase this? You know, so they start the bid. There was no bid. Nothing. And then there was one man that raised his hand. He worked for this gentleman, and he goes, "If nobody wants it, I'll take it because I worked for them. They're, they were fine people." And so they gave him the picture, and the auctioneer slammed the hammer and says, well, "Everything is dismissed. Um, the auction is over." And they're all going, "What? What? You know what about this?" And it's like. Whoever has the son gets everything. <laughs> and so that gentleman who worked for them had the son, had everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good picture yeah. of abundant life. Yeah. God, I picture God looking for ways to bless us. That's why he gave us the word. So that when we fit into it, he can give us all these things. So I don't live my life thinking, uh, well, it's going to be another tough day, but I'll somehow get to it. No, I don't I live my life thinking, that if there's a trouble, the trouble comes, God will get me through it, yes. But I'm not going to go around looking for trouble. And I'm going to enjoy what he gives me now. Uh, Mark can relate to that a lot more now that he's 
just come back from a place that has so little. But look at how those people had an experience with God. Man, when you worship with some of those people and they're so enthused and fired up and you see what they really value in life. You know? I had people ask me for the word instead of money or sweets that I would give to some kid. kids ask for. Them. I gave out some candy, you know, like in, in Bibles at a village. And when I left, I had gone. It was quite a ways. I want to say close to a mile. And I look back, and here comes three teenage boys running after me. What are they doing? I thought, oh, they're going to want candy or money. And they come running up, and they said, can we have a, a, a Bible? I, only had, I think I only had one left. But they gave it to me. They didn't ask for any candy or any money. They wanted the word. I went to a hospital, a brand new hospital, and I said, show me your uh, your supply closet. They didn't have how you bathe or anything. And I gave them some uh, little things like Tylenol and bandages and stuff that people had donated that I took with me. And I said, here's some Bibles to give to your patients. They were more appreciative of the Bibles than, than they were of the medical stuff. <laughs> They're hungry for the Word. And, and that is a blessing to be around people that are hungry for the Word. And they know about abundant life, even though they sit on the dirt floor to go to church. But I, I believe in both. I, we have abundant life, and we also have troubles. But we have help for everyone. Okay, let's keep going. Sister uh, Rebecca. Sometimes we can look back on how we handled something or reacted on something and feel disappointed. I know I do. When I look back, certain things, I say, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. And I failed that test. But other times I can look back and see where I did the right thing. And God blessed me. And I see it more and more. The older I get, God is developing character. 
simple example. I shared it with Eli and Bella yesterday. Uh, my, my ranger got wrecked, and the, the guy came and gave the estimate for the repairs he was going to make. And when I got the repairs done and looked at the bill that they, the insurance covered for the, the damage, the insurance company paid for a part that wasn't ever replaced. That didn't require replacement. It wasn't damaged. They made a mistake. And I said, oh, what do I do about that? I, said, I could just say nothing and keep the money, or I can call the insurance company and take the chance that they say, well, send us a check back. And it was about a little over $100. So I called the insurance company, and first guy's on vacation. Temptation is, well, you tried. So I call another guy. And he's on vacation or not answering. I think it was at least three calls in the meeting. And then the third guy said, call the first guy back. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not trying to get money from you. I'm just trying to tell you the rules of paper. And he wanted me to call the other guy. So I called the other guy, and he says, that's okay. That was our estimate, and you can keep it. See how God bless? Okay. Yeah. <coughs> you did that? No, I think Brandon did that. Oh. I thought you did. Oh. Walked out of the store with something that. The card. Yeah. <laughs> I went back in. She goes, wow. I was very honest with you. Yeah. Well, that's Lord building our character. I was in the school with her. She was. Oh. I mean, I will break out my word. Three, three uh, cop cars come swooping in on you, guns drawn. Yeah. Vicky's yeah. running for the door. So, what did you, uh, you say out there? You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your parents. <laughs> What I'm trying to talk about is God shapes our character and he develops it. Now, it doesn't mean we're, we're going to be perfect and make every decision the right one, <coughs> but we're going to try. And if, if God speaks to us, then we're going to say, okay, Lord, you're right. I'll go back and pay for that water. <laughs> or that car. Or that car. <laughs> check on this. joy only comes from God. Same thing as wisdom. It only comes, there's worldly wisdom. That's more like intelligence and education. But there's godly wisdom and joy only comes from God. Sister Vicki. Mention the power. Big word.
Holy Spirit. Okay, so we feel something inside of us telling us to do something. <coughs> How do we know it's the Holy Spirit and not us? Or not something we were taught? One way is because typically the Holy Spirit speaks to us about doing things for ourselves, things that we ourselves do. Okay. Justify it. Yeah, but you know, when you take that effort to recognize the you know, the voice is spoken and you're aware of it, and you need to go back in. When you go back in, that's again something you're responding to the spirit. Good. And not just of course they just set us free to sin. And we know we can go to the not to sin. Okay. So I get an impression, I get a, a feeling that I should do something. It's not out of, it's not something I normally would do. So now I'm thinking, oh, this could be the Holy Spirit speaking to me. Is there anything else I can do to confirm it? Well, you're always going to have the opportunity to check the understanding. So it's got to match the word. Can't go against the word. Right. And how are we going to know the word if we only hear it in church? You're not going to get the whole Bible in church. <laughs> You're not going to get close. So we, we need to read it daily. Uh, good. Any, uh, anything else? What happens if we ignore that? Okay, we start feeling comfortable about it. Uh, but I, you know, I'm busy and I just keep on going and don't do it. And what what happens to us? Or how do we how do we feel after that? Think of anything? What do you say? Discipline? Oh, conviction. Yes, okay. 
So now you have conviction, the Holy Spirit speaking to you. What, what happens when we ignore conviction? So you're veering away, and, and what can happen to that conviction after a long time? What's the word say about our conscience? The conviction is speaking to our conscience, right? So what happens to our conscience if we ignore it long enough? It becomes hardened. And, and it doesn't bother us as much anymore. And, and you couldn't get to the point where that used to bother me, but it don't bother me anymore. I've heard that said before. And that's dangerous, because now, if we are veering away from God, and it don't bother us anymore, what's going to draw us back? God speaks to us in that, that gentle whisper. But if we don't listen, because he loves us, he's not going to say, well, go ahead, go on. No, <laughs> he'll speak a little louder and get our attention another way. And that's when we don't like it. Say, well, if God got a hold of me, yeah. So now I've got to deal with all that concept. Because I didn't listen back there. But we don't want to do that. We want to listen to him. To that gentle whisper. And I, I pray. Because I need that help. I need the help to listen. I pray Lord help me to hear cl clearer. And respond quicker. And I have a habit of. of uh, putting it off. You know, maybe hear a little whisper. And What way do you Is that you, Lord? <laughs> Anybody want to say anything out before we go on? We're in, we're in sensitive territory. But this is what it makes the Christian walk real to me. It, it brings it into our lives. You know, it's, it's part of our lives all the time. I think so. I think most likely it would be. You know, and he'll, he, he's merciful and he keeps working on us. But the danger is you can get, you can say no so many times that your conscience gets hardened. Now he may speak to you, but you don't hear him. My ears are plugged up. My ears are plugged today in the Paul. But we might not hear. Uh, and then I, the Bible sounds like it says you can get to a point where you won't hear. Just because you've turned away so many times. It goes to the ears being heard to your heart being heard. Yeah. And it's that point that, that That's scary.
time in the Old Testament where God told the prophet, don't pray for those people. They turned away too many times. So it sounds like you can cross a line. And to me, that's why it's scary. If all of a sudden things aren't bothering you that used to bother you, you got to wonder, wait a minute, am I, am I getting my conscience here? Am I not being sensitive, Lord? Is my heart getting hard? Within the hour, that was that. You know, I don't want to miss what he's going to be talking about because my heart is hardened and my conscience is <coughs> um, missing. And this would be not from the Old Testament, but it was 400 years of silence. Hmm. That must have been like a hopeless whole decade for the people. Well, I, I think it would have been hard, but, but don't forget, they still the had. Days. They still had the word from before. Yeah. So they still had that to draw. Um, they had no pressure. Yeah. They still had the, the ability to be close to God and, and study the word from before and worship. And all those things yeah. Without, yeah. without the fresh revealing, it must have been a dark time. Yeah. Thinking about is he ever going to come? Yeah. You know, we say that now. Yeah. You talk to an older person, a lot of times they'll say, well, "They've been talking about this being the end times since I was a kid." Mm -hmm. you know, they keep on saying that. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, they were probably getting discouraged. But we can look at scripture now and see, man, the evidence of the end times is a lot clearer now than it was hundred years. Spiritual things are done spiritually. I can't, I have no control over my, my spiritual side of me. It has to be me agreeing with what God shows me. And he makes the change in me. Before, I didn't like to, well, I didn't like to read God's word. I remember that. You know, I had forced myself. And I was really good at it. I would read one or two verses and go to bed. But God's changed me. Now I can say I love God's word. That was God doing it, not me. I had no ability to do that. But what he's saying here is when you make the choice to do the right thing, then the Holy Spirit will begin to change you. It starts doing the process.
we have a part to do, that's and then God has his part. Right. Right. And if we don't pick up our part, he's got nothing to work with, kind of. You know? but, but so our responsibility, I mean, if we're going to sit back and say, look, if the Holy Spirit, like, only the Holy Spirit has the power to make changes God wants to make in our lives, I agree. However, if we are not where we should be or even trying to, you know, if we're not trying to walk, then, you know, it's not going to be good. Our responsibility is great. Really. If we can't just say, well, the Holy Spirit hasn't done anything or, you know, whatever. It's not him. It's Peter, you know, because our responsibility is huge. Truly. Kind of like a teacher used to say to us kids in eighth grade, you get out of life what you put into it. Yeah. If you don't put anything in, you're not going to get anything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make the same teacher? He might have. <laughs>
service may not be over. change, I tell people, there's no 
no salvation. You've got to have change to get saved. That God changes you. And you ought to be able to look back and say, well, there's something different about what I used to do, what my life was like. Now, it may be kind of hard to detect the day you first prayed to be saved. But it shouldn't take very long. I thought maybe you wanted to say something about the <laughs> Well, there's a good place to hold up. Sue, do you, I like you start tonight at Bible study. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who wants to close with some prayer? Thank you, and welcome back to Brother March. <coughs> if, if you're not confident. <laughs>